Last year, I made a bet with my audience that if I got a thousand subscribers, I'd tattoo myself. How hard could it be? Oh man. Oh God. 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 So how did I get myself in this mess? Well, it started with this video over here. I was around 500 subscribers at the time, and I really wanted to hit a thousand. I thought it'd be fun to draw your guys' ideas, and now it's time to put my money where my mouth is. So these were the eight designs. I ran a community vote. The steampunk Valkyrie ended up winning, and now it's time to refine it. Before I continue, let me just say, I'm just a dude with a tattoo machine. Please don't learn from me. This video is for entertainment purposes only. There's way better channels that explain how to tattoo. With that out of the way, let's get into it. So pretty much with the refinement, my, uh, my perspective was just a little off, so I wanted to fix that up a bit and then there was so much going on that I wanted to just condense it and clean it up a bit because once I get that stencil on my skin there's just gonna be a lot of like stuff that I have to keep track of so it'd be easier for me to condense everything. Now it's time to transfer this design to my skin so I print it out on my thermal printer then I can like test it on my skin see how it looks and then I grabbed some transfer paper and I'm pretty much gonna take a ballpoint pen and trace it onto a thinner piece of paper with the thermal printer above it and pretty much i'm just pressing down on the design so this like blue stuff gets on the back side i like to tape the design to the thin paper that way they stay in one piece so i can just move it around and then when i'm doing the ballpoint transfer even though there's just pockets of like heavily black area i don't want to put all of that in the transfer because it's just gonna smudge when i put it on my skin so i have to like outline everything i'm pretty much making a loose map of where the shading's gonna go and then this is usually the most tedious part of it like i know i could get a printer and like print out the design and it would be so much easier but i don't know sometimes i like to do things the hard way and do it for a year till i get fed up with it but yeah, so if I turn it around, you can see that I have this rough map. Now it's time for me to shave my leg, and this helps me put on the stencil a little bit more. It's a little bit more sanitary, I don't have to worry about ingrowing hairs or the needles pushing hair into my skin. It just makes it a little bit easier. Now I'm putting on my gloves and I'm disinfecting the area. And then after that, I put on stencil stuff. A few drops is all I need, and it really makes the stencil pop out. Um, it takes about like 10 to 20 minutes for it to dry. I like to wait till 20 minutes so I don't have to worry about the stencil falling off on my skin. And then I'm going to try my best to keep it on my skin as flat as possible. And then I want to make sure I don't like smear it. And now I'm going to gently peel it off and I'm pretty happy with how this is. I can see all my lines. So now I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to try my best to sterilize everything. Rubbing alcohol isn't really that good, but I didn't have matticide and I didn't have bleach on hand. So kind of just ignore this part. Now I'm just saran wrapping my surfaces. That way it just adds an extra layer of protection. I swapped out my gloves and I put Vaseline on the bottom of the ink cap so it sticks on. As far as cartridge sizes, I'm going to use a five round for my liner and a three round for my whip shading. I wrapped up my machine, I put new gloves on, and now I'm going to get ready to tattoo myself. And the first couple lines are always the most nerve wracking. Those are always when like my hand is the most shaky. And I try to go from bottom left to top right. That way the palm of my hand doesn't smear my stencil as I go up. So for my first pass, I just wanted to get my lines marked on my skin. That way I won't lose the stencil. And in a perfect world, I should be able to do it in one pass but I need more practice and it usually takes me two to three passes. I don't want to do anything over that because I risk turning my skin into hamburger meat and that's when I risk infection or the ink falling off. Usually by the second or third pass I'm a lot more confident with stretching my skin that way I'm not scared of blurring out my stencil too. It's probably not the best habit but I'll work on it in the future. While doing this thigh piece, it was nice because it wasn't too painful because of all the fat. And around the three hour mark, it started to strain my back a little bit because I was always twisted just a little bit. And then the farther side I went to my thigh, the harder it was to keep a straighter line. So I know what you're thinking, that line work looks pretty rough. And I agree. But I think I can save it once I add whip shading. Normally, I don't like to rely on shading to save pieces, even in my digital artwork too. But then, I realize, I always had shaky lines. 
So if I can just make it look intentional, I might be able to pull this off. So I turned down my machine speed to the lowest and I kind of just raked it along my skin. I swapped out my needle to a three round. I raked it along my skin and I went through a lot of passes because I wanted to build up the value slowly. I didn't want to oversaturate it too fast. So this is him freshly done. From a distance, it looks good. And as long as you don't really focus on the line work, it looks fine enough. I'm pretty happy with it. And to be honest, it's one of the better ones I've done to myself. The real question is how will it heal? Because some of these lines are super thin. This is the day after and it looks okay. Day number two, the redness is starting to go away. As far as tattoo aftercare, I'm just doing the leave it alone method. By day three, most of like the redness and sensitivity went away. By around day four, he started to dry up and this is where the onion skinning is going to start happening. He's going to start drying up pretty soon and this is where I have to really make sure not to itch myself because my lines are so thin that I might actually pick off some of the ink. This is probably the worst part about tattoo recovery is the itching phase. It takes a lot of will not to scratch this spot and once you like gently rub against it, you're gonna wanna itch it some more. So it's just a constant battle of trying not to pick out your ink. At this point, it's looking pretty gross, but it's healing perfectly fine. Kinda like a snake shedding its skin. You're just getting rid of that first layer. And I'll be completely honest, I thought some of these lines were gonna fall out. I was like worried that I'd lose like a lot of detail, but it all stayed in pretty well. The only problem with like thin line tattoos like these is that after a couple years, they'll start to fade and get more blurry. But you know, that's a future problem. And worst case scenario, I just blast over it. So I'm not too worried about it. 